everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. I've been getting more and more questions about resin. So this video is for those of you starting to play with it, and maybe some of you that use it quite a bit, but for other things. If you're not going to pour resin onto a surface as a top coat, or create an actual painting with resin, you might want to make jewelry, or magnets, or embellishments. The list is really endless, but for those things, you pretty much need a mold of some sort. And more often than not, you're ordering them online. Like these. Very simple, flexible silicone. Perfect for jewelry. They even have a little stem built in to create a hole for you. Or more rigid plastic like these from littlewindows.com. I love these because they're super shiny and resin pops out so easily. This, I forget who makes. I am not crazy about this. The plastic isn't that shiny. It's too rigid, too hard, and it's difficult to get resin pieces out of it. Or these, really good for coasters or pea trees. Or these, very detailed, super flexible silicone molds that let you make fun embellishments. Or these. Now these actually come in full sheets, but I have a tendency to cut them up because it makes it a little easier. I rarely am gonna make 24 of something, but I will often make two of something or three of something. So cutting them up into smaller manageable pieces tends to be more convenient for me. Some stores may carry these, but like the other piece, I, these are not my favorites. They're harder to pop pieces from because the plastic, I think, is too stiff. They're only semi-shiny, which I kind of don't like. I either want something to be matte or shiny. The semi-shiny stage makes me feel kind of obligated to put a, a shiny or top coat on top. And the, the sides aren't straight up and down. They're kind of angled out which makes it a little tricky to drill a top piece if you want to put a screw at the top. Overall, not my favorite, but they're really inexpensive and it may be exactly what you're looking for. So, unless you're super adventurous and willing to make your own molds, we're back to ordering online because not many brick and mortar stores carry molds for resin. But the truth is, they do, if you know where to look. Now, if you're thinking, I've been to Michael's and Joanne's, Miriam, there's no resin mold section, and there certainly isn't one at Walmart or Target, and you're right, but there is often a baking and cake decorating section. So today, we're not making anything. We're going shopping at my local Joanne. For those of you not in the U.S. or Canada, Joanne is a large chain of craft and fabric stores. So, let's go. Now, before we get to the baking section, I want to make this really quick stop in the polymer clay area. Here you'll find molds meant for clay, like these two. Since they're silicone, they'll work well for what we do. I actually used this particular mold in a video not too long ago. And by the way, if you also work with polymer clay, resin looks wonderful on it. Alrighty, let's head to the baking department. In this aisle, we encounter these molds by Wilton. In the U.S., they run about $12 before the coupon. I don't know anybody that buys anything from Joanne or Michael's without a coupon. <laughs> These are large and allow you to make many pieces at once. This size, for example, is 24 pockets in various shapes. 
They're designed for small muffins, brownies, that sort of thing. Most molds of this style have a matte finish. Now, if you're very new to resin, something to keep in mind when buying your mold is the finish. Is it shiny or is it matte or is it in between? Whatever finish your mold has is exactly the same finish it's going to impart to the resin piece you create in it. So if shiny is important, maybe aim for shiny molds. For me, shape is usually more critical, so I'll just add a thin top coat to a matte piece if I want it to be shiny. But there's an advantage to already shiny molds. It's one less step to do. Now we're in the aisle for decorating fondant. That colorful outer layer on cake that usually gets sculpted into all sorts of things like animals, Disney cartoon characters, flowers and other plants, letters under sea life, shells, or just pretty scrolls. Sometimes some of these pieces are even small enough for jewelry. The rest of the time they make great embellishments for mixed media pieces, anywhere you want to add a little three-dimensional pop. Now while you're in this area, pay attention to the silicone tools. They can be very practical if you have to mix large batches of resin, for example, for spreading resin, for scooping up small amounts of it to pour on something, or to drizzle on your artwork. These are much easier to deal with than, let's say, wooden spoons or large popsicle sticks. The wooden ones are much more difficult to clean, or you end up discarding them. These silicone versions are less wasteful and more economical over time. You don't even have to wipe these down. Just let the resin cure on them overnight and just peel off the residue easily the next day. Here we have more Wilton molds in different shapes. I'm not exactly sure why these are separated from the other ones. I'm sure there's a really good reason, but I really don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to guess. <laughs> All the ones in this section have a matte finish. Given the size of these flower molds, I think these would make super fun creative doorknobs. Given how deep these particular ones are, I think that would be totally doable. You could give them very intricate color or maybe just a very pale tint for more of a beach glass look since they have a matte finish. I think these fun beach oriented shapes could make the cutest drawer pulls or doorknobs for cabinetry or for decorating a toy chest with like a pirate theme or a little mermaid theme. All this stuff has so much fun potential. This collapsible bowl in its collapsed state could be a good petri dish mold with a slightly atypical rounded finish. And with a coupon, the price is pretty good. This is what it looks like expanded, by the way, in case you were curious, because I have to admit, I really was myself, so I kind of had to pop it out to see what it looked like. <laughs> okay, now we're in the candy making section. So the molds here are smaller. These are designed for chocolate, gummy bears, you know, that kind of thing. Here again, you'll find molds that are either matte or shiny, or somewhere in between. Now, let's take a hard look at these for a moment. What material do you think they are? They're reasonably priced. They have lots of fun details. They come in lots of colors and several different patterns or styles. They're a nice, small size. They are really pretty darn shiny. They are even shiny on the back. <laughs> okay, would you suspect that these were silicone? A hard plastic, don't you think? Nah, I'm sure you've guessed. 
I was rather surprised when I realized they were our soft friend. <laughs> Say it with me now. These are silicone. <laughs> and therefore, they're perfect for us. How cute are some of these? Imagine all the different colors you can add to these as you layer in your resin. You could add glitter, mica powders, acrylic paints, all of that in your resin as you're putting the colors in. Or you can make up a whole batch of these in just white, for example, and then let kids paint them. There is just so much fun you can have with these. <laughs> What's great about being able to buy molds in person is that you can pick the best one. When you order a mold online, you're at the mercy of whoever is picking out the mold from their stock. You may get a perfect one, or you may get one with a frustrating little blemish that will be reproduced in every single piece you ever make in it. But when you're picking out molds in a store, you can hand pick the mold that has the best interior finish. That's a huge plus. And I have saved the seasonal best for last before we leave Joanne, this awesome apple and pumpkin mold. I think it's pretty fabulous. What do you think? <laughs> Alrighty, let's go talk about other options back at home. Now, depending on your craft store or craft section, you may be able to find these. My local Joanne doesn't carry these anymore, but my Michael's store does. But again, these are not stated for resin. They're actually designed for Mod Podge's line of hot glue. Go figure. You're supposed to use a hot glue gun and squeeze the glue into these little vessels and make like embellishments. But these are silicone. That's why they can handle the heat of the hot glue. So they're perfect for resin. And one of the reasons I love these so much is they are already the perfect depth for creating resin pieces. They come in many different styles. Some of them have a very matte finish like this, which I sometimes really like actually. And some of them are super shiny, like this one. So it depends on the style that you get. And they come in lots of different patterns. These are only about half the styles that my Michaels carries. So I don't know what styles you'll be able to find by you. Now I've seen these online as well, but whenever I have, they've been pretty pricey. So if you're lucky enough to be able to get them at Michaels or Hobby Lobby or whatever stores are by you, these are great to get with a coupon because they'll just end up being around $4. When you're in a grocery store or places like Walmart or Target or Ikea, check out ice cube trays. Lots of times these are made out of silicone. And depending on the time of year, you may be able to find some that have a seasonal look to them. Like these are supposed to be little witches hats or wait until after the season has passed and you can probably get these on clearance. Like I got this one for 19 cents and it had been $1.99, it was 90% off. Of course I had to get it, it would have been silly not to. <laughs> these make great backpack zipper pulls. You can dangle them from a bookmark. Some could work as pendants, definitely magnets or fun keychains. This one um, was a peace sign, so I was able to make this fun keychain out of it. There are just so many molds out there that you may have never noticed. You may also find really inexpensive chocolate molds. They're really thin plastic, so extra easy to get the resin out of. They're a little big for some things, but these are snowmen. I don't know if you can see that. But at this size, they'd make great ornaments. Something else not to overlook. Now, I wouldn't say buy something specifically for this reason, 
but pay attention to packaging like this type, this shiny plastic type. It's often really, really shiny, and the inside is usually blemish free. Resin releases from it pretty darn easily, but if for some reason you have a hard time, you can cut it off. You are gonna throw this out anyway. Usually popping the piece into the freezer for about 10 minutes does the trick and makes the resin pop out, but like I said, you can cut it off if you have to. Now, by looking at packaging, you may find really interesting shapes. Like I think there's a magnet possible with this shape here. This one I'm thinking could end up being some sort of fun pendant, I'm not sure, but I think this one has a lot of possibility. Sometimes the outer packaging isn't quite right, though I think this one's gonna make a really cool Petri, but sometimes an insert might work really well. Like this was inside this. I think that could be a fun bookmark. There's a whole world of molds out there that you may have never noticed. So start paying attention and you may find lots of fun things. <laughs> I'm hoping that now that you've seen some of these, you'll recognize them when you're out and about in your stores. What awesome molds have you passed by? If you get one, post it in my Facebook group. I would love to see what treasures you discover where you are. The selection by you may be completely different, but equally as interesting, fun, and maybe super pretty. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe for lots more like this. Let me know if you'd like to go on other shopping trips with me, or if you'd like to see what fun things I've bought recently. Those of you that are supporting patrons of my channel on Patreon, this week I'll post a sneak peek video at what totally different things I ordered recently to work with. Stuff I'd never even seen before. You can become a patron too to keep more videos coming and to help make them a little fun and different. Thank you for going shopping with me. It was awesome having you along. <laughs> See you in a few days. Bye now.